channel. Today I will be talking about should you ever invest with the Motley Fool. So I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown who these guys are. So Motley Fool is a news um, letter subscription that recommends you to buy shares and depending on what you like, it's up to you if you want to buy them or not. So therefore they're just a news outlet that just um, give you all the share recommendations either you want to buy them or not just for your investment needs. So in the past couple of years, people have some mixed um, um, feelings about this um, group and I'm just going to find out if they're really worthwhile to subscribe to. So they recommend me five stocks of, of worthy um, um, investments to buy. So first up is Webjet. Even though I don't know how to go out of business, they reckon these stocks are the one to own, but let's see if this really lives up to its name. So I'm going to I'll look them up for them myself. So what I do is I just type it in and see what uh, simply Wall Street have to say about these companies. Okay, so looks like a healthy business. Let's look at the share price. All right, roughly at $13.14. Okay, it did so well in the share price. Mm, okay, coming down. Oh, okay, the validation seems good. That was great pricing. It's not too expensive, not undervalued, so that's good. Okay, so this is the earnings and revenue growth estimate. So, seems reasonably stable. Well, the revenue can be kind of like tumbling up and down, but I believe that's normal for a business like Webjet. So, future growth and analysis. Well, earnings growth seems pretty good, and part with um, reach online retail, yeah, outperforms the market, and yeah, so it looks like revenue growth is all right, and the earnings per share. Well, I guess this is a solid um stock recommendation. Yep, just I imagine. So that's really good for um Motley Fool. So if you want to buy into Webjet. I'd say it's a okay buy. I mean, considering you had to bear in mind they do have two hundred and twenty-three million dollars in debt, and that they do have a net worth equity of six hundred and forty million dollars. So yeah, I mean, other than that, so yeah, that sounds okay. Uh, let's check um, the Treasury White Estate. All right, that may not look so bad. Got to wait until this one loads up. All right, so hmm, let's look up the share price. Okay, sixteen dollars and thirty-four. All right, it's going sideways at the moment by the looks of it for this later part of the year. So, if you bought your shares back in, let's say, two thousand and fourteen, from four dollars twenty-seven cents and still hang on to them right now, you made it a decent killing. Well, it should be worth $16 something at the moment. So it looks like it's relatively okay. The, the pricing, the valuation of the share price looks seems to be all right, actually. Even though the future cash flow value is at $13 something. A bit over, but it's okay. Now let's see, let's have a look at the earnings and revenue growth. Well, fairly stable earnings, grows every year, seems all right. Okay, looks like seems good. Okay, the earnings per share estimates. Well, looks like it's a, a solid performer. Uh, given that they, they only had a bit of a loss there, but hey, they're doing okay. So they're doing pretty good. So. Uh, there's a fair chunk of debt. Okay. And dividends expected to rise. Sounds okay. So there's just other information about shareholders and management and so on. So let's look at the other one, Blackmores.
Okay, looks like it's all right. Let's see how much this is worth. Oh, 90 bucks. So it's fallen off quite a lot from 164, $62.10 back in September 2000, or way before September 2018. Now it's like 90 bucks. Okay, that's quite a oh, while wow, I would recommend like that. Or you go to the three year graph, it's kind of like going on an up and down sideways. And the last five years, well, they had a very huge rise up to $220 back in 2015. Now it's like 91 bucks. Okay, I guess uh, it's a high cap um, company, I can see that. I don't know, I, I think the price may be expensive. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, it looks like they did have a, a huge blip in 2015 and then kind of went down halfway and then sideways, up and down. Looks like he may tread lower. Okay, so let's see the price. It's about right um, based on its future cash flow value. Let's see. All right. Okay, compared to other shares, I mean, their um, earnings is like like roughly around about $62 million and in some in the future, it will be at $82 million in earnings, whereas compared to revenue, going from $627 million to $781 million. Uh, that sounds not so right. I mean, it hasn't made much on earnings growth and revenue growth. The um, uh, well, it's I'm getting a bit mixed um reaction here around here. This it seems okay. The um estimated um earnings per share. Okay, this is quite questionable. So, so it looks like the earnings have just dipped a bit and the revenue is still roughly okay. It's rising but it's fallen down a bit. Past earnings growth, okay, it's fairly a bit mixed. And the liabilities, oh my gosh, they do have a lot of debt, $109 million in debt and their share worth, I mean net worth equity is $209 million. Okay, that's well. Oh, that sounds uh, not too bad. Okay, that's okay, the most expensive stock I've come across from from Motley Fool for Black Moors. So let's try next one, Challenger. All right, well, okay, so it looks like it did somewhat fairly badly. It kind of like um, went sideways, rose up a bit um, stably, and then somewhere in 2008, last year, it went, start to decline down to $6.73. bucks. Okay, so this is a financial group um, challenger. So, the price, uh, it's reasonably right for its value. Mm, let's see. Oh, okay. So it looks like the revenue is about to collapse down to $813 from uh, from $2 million and $630 million. Okay. That's, and they estimated um, earnings is from. 133 million and then it's just gradually about to increase to 38 6 million okay that sounds quite a not so optimistic um stock and their earnings per share expected to uh, increase or, or recover well that's just optimistic actually Oh, okay, so it looks like by look at their revenue, well, it doesn't seem to be that right. Oh, yikes, that's not so good. 
has earnings growth. This is, this is kind of like um, raise a bit of a red flag. Oh my gosh, their debts is actually a lot more than its net worth. So this is not a really good stock to buy from the Motley Fool. So what I'm getting here is that um, Motley Fool um, stock recommenda recommendations tend to be like overpriced at the moment, or well, somewhat overpriced. Is reasonably okay price, but some of them can be overpriced, and most of the stocks have even like fallen from its um, 52 week high. So that's something is to be concerned of because usually they don't give out any stock recommendation that is like um, at its lowest, not even the value stocks. And Babcor, that's the final um, stock I will uh, look up. BAP. Okay, let's see. Ooh, all right. So this is an okay stock, I reckon. Bap call. All right. So it's worth six dollars and twenty-two cents. The highest ever risen was seven dollars sixty over a five-year period. I guess it's not too bad. Seems reasonable. All right. So oh, so it's undervalued. So that's the one stock they recommend that is undervalued at this point. Now let's look at its earnings. Well, its earnings weren't going to increase much. Well, it looks like it's from eighty-nine million to ninety-five million, up to one hundred three million. Next couple of years, uh, and revenue from one thousand and twenty-six, twenty fifty-six million, or I'll say a billion, uh, rising um, steadily. Okay, earnings growth seems reasonable. Okay, the earnings per share looks all right. Uh, okay, so. They're getting a lot in revenue and a tiny increase in um, earnings. So, hmm, seems an okay stock, but I don't think I would buy this one. Oh my gosh, four hundred and two million dollars in debt, and the share, the net worth equity is six hundred and eighty-five million. Buying a company with a lot of debt—that sounds kind of risky. I can tell you, dividend payouts set to increase, but oh, this is a bit of a. I, I have some mixed feelings about this stock, even though it did okay or is stable at the moment. But seriously, I'll, most of the companies which they recommend, the one I'm getting here has some significant amount of debt. The other two stocks I've seen for from them have even like higher levels of debt. I don't know about you, but I would personally buy a company with that amount of debt. And yeah, they just typically of their um, reports though, they're all just spruik and spruik on about their I don't know bloody um track record and so on. But let's see about their track record for a moment. So IRI. Okay. All right, it seems all right. Oh, this is an overvalued stock. Okay, definitely won't buy that one. All right, so it looks like the earnings and revenue growth is somewhat, I don't know, increasing not so much for the next couple of years. Somewhat a bit flat. Yeah, flat earnings growth. Yeah, that's a bit optimistic. Yeah, let's see um, their net worth and um, okay, the net worth looks all right. So, uh, I guess that's a, a, a still an overpriced stock, even though it looks okay. Like I'm according to the technical chart here, but still, I reckon, like according to simply Wall Street, they know like this is like an overpriced stock, so it should be worth like a dollar. Okay, 
Now let's see, R E A. So I'm, I'm really getting from this um, Motley Fool report is that they don't really care about if, if any stock is worth um, holding for, like regards of its um, earnings and and um and earnings growth, but they only care about is stock the stock price. So what they they're suggesting with their read is that um they're selling like um they would recommend shares that are, are at a higher valuation. It can be quite dangerous if you recommend someone to buy a stock that is like worth like close to ninety seven dollars. Or even like um from a year ago, I mean last year if they buy at seventy four bucks. It, it can be fairly dangerous. I mean, well, it just went overvalued. It's unbelievable, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, this is the reason, some reason that people could lose money because, as the estimates um, suggest, um, it can be different. Like um, look into the future. So this is just way too optimistic uh, with these stock recommendations. And yeah, I mean, most I know that most stock reports tend to have a lot of optimism, but still, you got to be cautious of the company's past record and yeah I mean they still have like a um, fair amount of debt even though it's slowly paying off okay so this is not looking good premier investments PMB okay like that one Okay, let's try oh, the past recommendation. Okay, all right, that's for going from yeah from nineteen dollars to sixteen dollars. All right, that's not a good start, I guess, for the whole year. The way he's performing, well, he's been rising steadily. Okay, let's see. All right, so it's unvalued stock. Okay. Well, earnings and revenues somewhat flat was increasingly over a bit. Okay, earnings growth sounds all right. Okay, optimistic um, earnings per share. Okay, so it's an okay stock, but oh, past earning growth, oh, not a good sign. Yeah, that. that yeah, you gotta keep in mind you can be either um pessimistic or optimistic with these um reports and yeah it's, well you had to be both you know well at the end of the day this, the decision is yours if you want to buy them or not because honestly I have some mixed thoughts about their stock recommendation ResMed. Okay, let me have a look. Wow, okay, it went from $13 to $17 over a year. Oh, well, yeah, roughly hopping from 14 to 17 Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's overpriced. So it should be at least $11, not $17. Okay, it's the earnings and revenue. Well, they're roughly, I don't know, won't, won't increase much. So, honestly, I'm sure it's that's a worthwhile stock to buy because, to me, oh, they have a huge chunk of debt compared to their, uh, their net worth. Honestly, I wouldn't buy any stock that is like overvalued. And honestly, I mean, I think the problem with this group is they only care about the stock prices going up. One thing they never do is um, to sell. Yep, they never give up any um, sell recommendations. So there is something rotten about this group, I'll tell you the truth. And honestly, um, I just recently decided to unsubscribe to their newsletters. I never paid any cents to their um, reports. I just thought I'd just try it for free, see what they have. Okay, it looks like they may not be that worth it. Okay, 
All right. So the typical people that will track is just those who, who think um, they will get rich and go on the stock market. But honestly, another way to get rich in the stock market, you got to buy a good quality company that is cheap in terms of stock price, good earnings um, um, reports, like they have like, good uh, um, earnings and figures and less debt. Honestly, it just seems like not the, not the, not a thing a way to go <laughs> with these um, recommendations. Own focus. Yeah, honestly, I just don't think the Molly Fool fool is is any good because it just seems like they're just um, showing off. So they just try to suck in with all those who are uneducated about stock prices. Yeah, you, you easily fall for that though. They try to spruik their past credentials. I mean, believe it or not, like their um latest um stock um report that which they're trying to sell is like a marijuana group, which is solely a, not a good way to um, recommend because none of these stocks in Australia have um have made a, any money for it. So let's look for this group, Vocus, a telecommunication group based in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, from a five year chart. So mostly is at, um, the, the highs it been to was um, $9.20 from, from 2016. Now it's like $3.32. That is shocking, um, given that it's like it's one of their past recommendations. Okay, where did they say um, they recommended um, mended, um, to buy this stock? Okay, this is like a recent um, report and the claim it's up by 232%. Right now I'm looking at it from a five year chart. It's like, ugh, horrible. Three years, nah. Well, I don't think it is much of a, of a good rise. Depends how you look at it though. Um, honestly, this is a dying um, company, I reckon. Well, according to the stock price, let's say it's really dying. Okay, so it's undervalued. Oh, okay, they did have a um a crash in um its um, earnings. Even the revenue say is roughly the same. Estimates, oh, there's not much optimism with the estimates. Okay. Let's see. Uh, earnings per share. Well, it's stayed flat. Uh, past performance, not so good. Okay, now. Okay, I reckon it could be one of the worst stock recommendations they ever gave us, or gave the, their readers. But honestly, it sounds really bad. I mean, they got more than a billion dollars in debt. I mean, two billion dollars in net worth, equity. I don't know, but to be honest, it doesn't sound like a really good stock. So I'm getting a really mixed impression about this group. Honestly, yeah, they're just bloody spooking out their credentials, suggesting to buy stocks that either um at reasonable price. Some are really bad. Some are even overpriced. And this is the typical newsletter I always get saying how great they are, when in reality, they just produce mixed results. Honestly, do you really think it's really worth it? Because I don't think it's worth buying it into it, because honestly, they don't give you any sell recommendations. They just tell you just buy this, buy that, blah, 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 and just play on your fears, your greed, and so on. Honestly, I don't think uh, it's really worth it. For any investor who's starting out, my my advice to you, uh, just be wary of this group. I personally won't buy into their reports because honestly, they're just showing off. That's all I have to say. Have a good one.